Sophie here. So today I'm going to be talking about how to get a better night's sleep in menopause and beyond. All right, so I'm really excited to talk to you about this topic. 80% of women who are in menopause and beyond, 80, that would be the majority, um, have some kind of sleep disturbance when they're in menopause and beyond. And this can start as early as, as perimenopause. And the deleterious effects on your health from not getting enough sleep are, 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 are can be pretty can be pretty extreme. Um, it affects everything. You know that, don't you? From you know, if you have a bad night's sleep and you wake up in the morning, you you feel irritated, you feel sluggish, you have no energy, you might have brain fog, you are more likely to comfort eat um, or eat foods that are high caloric foods because you need the energy to get you through the day, and the list goes on and on. It can affect your brain health, your heart health. It can affect absolutely everything, and. Most significantly for me, because I'm a weight management specialist and I coach and help women over the age of 45 to get into the best shape of their life, and part of that is releasing um, unwanted fat and unwanted pounds, when the women that I speak to and they first come to me um, and they say to me, I, I really am only getting six hours sleep, five hours sleep, or completely interrupted sleep, then I know it's something that we really need to look at. It's a very important piece of the puzzle when it comes to gaining weight after menopause. So back to those root causes. So the root causes could be uh, hormonal, shifting hormones and, and um, sex hormones plummeting. Um, it can also be a chronic disease. So if you've got um, insulin resistance, prediabetes, type two diabetes, inflammation, chronic inflammation, aches and pains, autoimmune, there can be underlying causes that can also cause sleep disturbances too, or at least make your menopausal sleep dis disturbances even worse. And then, of course, being overweight or obese, that can lead to other kinds of sleep disturbances, such as uh, breathing issues, sleep apnea, and the list goes on. Everything is interrelated. All of these things are interrelated. Bottom line, we have to deal with the root cause. So if you do have chronic illness, if you are overweight, if you have, um, you know, if you know that your hormones have plummeted, um, deal with those as well as the five tips I'm going to give you because I'm always about dealing with the root cause so that you really can have a long lasting solution. All right, but let's get into my, my five tips which have made a big difference to me which is why I'm sharing these with you. I am postmenopausal, so I have been through the whole sleep issue situation myself and I can honestly say that these five tips have made the biggest, biggest, lasting difference for me. So I'm really excited to share them with you. So number one is have a regular bedtime. Pick a regular bedtime. So for instance, you know, what you really want to do is you want to reverse engineer it. So you want to look at what time do I need to wake up in the morning in order that I can get in my morning routine before I start my day or before I go to work. And I work with my clients a lot on creating a really bulletproof morning routine. Hopefully you have a great morning routine. But I want you to really look, okay, so I need to wake up at six in the morning or I need to wake up at 5.45 in the morning, great, in order that, that I can get everything done before my day starts. Fantastic. So what time do I need to go to bed in order that I can get seven to nine hours sleep. Let's just go with the average because all sleep experts agree that seven to nine is the, is the golden number. So let's go with eight. Eight, eight and a half is where, where I am. That's a really sweet spot for me. So if I need to get eight and a half hours sleep and I need to wake up at six, no later than six, like get out of bed at six in the morning, then what time do I need to go to bed? So what you want to do is make that calculation and be very realistic about it because then you can set your bedtime. And once you've set your bedtime, the word is 
regular bedtime because if you go to bed one night at 9.30, another at 10, the next at 10.30, then the next at 9.30, that's not regular. That means you are confusing your system. You are not training your system, your circadian rhythms, your biological clock. You are not training it. And training it is what we need to do because most likely you've got all out of whack. You've been burning the candle at both ends. You're so busy, you're finishing up doing this, folding laundry, answering emails, dealing with family, whatever it is, until later than you, know, you should be and is healthy for you to do. Whereas if you set a bedtime and that's absolutely non-negotiable, number one, you've created something that that is non-negotiable, much like you would do for a child, a small child. You would go bedtime is, whatever it is, 7 p.m. or 8 p.m., lights out and then, and that's that. It's the biggest gift you can give to a child because then their system will train and that will be sort of almost encoded into their circadian rhythm for the rest of their life. Lost, many of us ladies have lost that, so you need to retrain yourself. The only way you can do that is by setting a regular bedtime, the same time every night. I cannot overstate the importance of this. It might take two to four weeks for you to actually train yourself. Right now you might go, well, there's no way if I set my bedtime at 10 or 9.30, there's no way that I'll go to sleep. I have a hard time going to sleep anyway. So, but it's counterintuitive because then you think I'm going to stay up pushing myself later and then I'll get tired and then I'll go to sleep. It doesn't work like that. That's just your cortisol levels which go way up at night and by pushing yourself and staying awake, you're making things even worse. I talk a lot about cortisol and so you'll have to look at some of my other videos because I talk a lot about menopause in general, health in general, health and weight gain and staying in shape for, for this age group and cortisol is a really big part of this so do check out some of my other videos. But can you see that you know, you're just exacerbating the situation if you think, well, I'll just read another book, do more emails, exercise late at night to try and get tired. No, you won't. You need to train your body to slow down. And I promise you, if you do that and you stick to it, eventually you will get there. All right. Tip number two is dim the lights. Now, this might sound obvious, but listen carefully. This ties in with tip number one. So what you need to happen is you need your melatonin to start kicking in in the early evening when the sunlight starts going down. You need your melatonin, natural melatonin, without taking any supplements to release and do the job which is to make you sleepy. You need your pituitary gland to release that melatonin. It is not going to do its job if there is light and bright light around you, okay? Now, I hear a lot, we all hear the experts go, no blue light, get away from your screens, your iPad, your phone, the TV, whatever. Yes, obviously, that's super important, that blue light, a light that emanates from any screen, even if you have the screen on nighttime, you know, when it dims down a little, but you still want to be really careful about that. But what I'm talking about is dimming all the lights in your home. I'm talking about incandescent light bulbs. Dim everything. If you haven't already, get all your lights on dimmer switches. And when the sun starts going down, okay, and when it is down, when it's dark outside, I want you to start dimming all of your lights. Because you know, many, 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 many moons ago, before there was, you know, lighting and, and our modern day lifestyle, when the sun went down and candles came out, you know, there was very little light and obviously everybody went to bed much, much earlier and then you would wake up much earlier. Obviously, we're so far removed from that, but we want to sort of redress the balance somehow. And honestly, for your holistic health and well-being and sanity and happiness, the more you can get in tune with the natural, your natural circadian rhythms that are directly connected to the light and dark cycles of the day and night, and obviously you'll follow the seasons because it changes with the seasons, that is going to be so important for you. The other little thing that I do is I like to wear uh, these nighttime glasses that cut out all of that light, whether it's incandescent, whether it's from a TV screen or anything. These little glasses here, I know my, my husband makes fun of me, they look a little silly, but 
they're very, very powerful. I can pop those on. Um, this, I'll put a link to this particular brand underneath the video because it's a really good, there's a lot of really cheap, not great ones online. This is a really good one and they have make them for you and they put in your prescription and whatnot. And they have one for the night and also they have one to cut out the light from a computer if you're sitting on a computer all day. So I have those two. So that could be really helpful and could make a massive, massive difference to you. All right, so we're building. These tips build, they're not random tips. I want you to see how I'm building, putting all this together for you. So number one, right, was regular bedtime. Number two is dimming down the lights, which is gonna help you to have a regular bedtime and release that melatonin. Tip number three is to have at least a three hour window before your last bite of food and when you go to bed. So if I'm going to bed at 9.30, then I need to have my last bite of food at 6.30. Dinner done, kitchen closed, I need two hours to completely digest my dinner and then an hour buffer room just to, to have everything just rest. It's not digesting, my system is just resting before I go to bed because I don't want it to have to do all that work when I get into bed. I will not sleep as well. So for those of you who do intermittent fasting, you want to shift your intermittent fast, not to the beginning of the day, but more towards the end of the day for that reason. That can make a big difference. Again, notice how all of these tips are just super, super natural, right? Again, it just goes with your body's natural biology. Now, tip number four is not so much, well, it's your natural biology when you're in menopause, which is this overheating thing. And this is where you might need something, you might need a little bit of extra help. So it's called vasomotor symptoms, technically, when we overheat and we can have hot flashes and night sweats. And they, are, they can be independent. So you can have hot flashes in the day and then you can have hot flashes with no night sweats and then you can have night sweats with no hot flashes. They're a little bit different. Sometimes hot flashes at night can precipitate a um, night sweats. But for me, uh, because of the way I eat, I think, because I'm a nutritionist and I do a lot of research and have put into practice eating to really significantly reduce this, um, symptoms of hot flashes, it wasn't really a hot flash thing for me. I, was, I, I, I made sure that that wasn't going to be a big issue for me. But for me, nonetheless, it was just getting overheated at night. There was a real problem and it was a problem for my husband and I because he sleeps very cold and I sleep very hot. Hello that's a bit of a situation because it, it would turn into the heat wars at night. I'd be like, listen, all the sleep experts say that, and by the way, the latest studies now say that you, your room, ambient temperature in your room, best for best night's sleep needs to be between 60 and 67 degrees Fahrenheit. So I really did lay that research. Um, on, in front of my husband for him and he's like, mm, yeah, whatever. So now we've got the, the thermostat down to 68. At least we've got it there, but it's 68. And unfortunately I can't control it because he goes to bed after me. Um, so that's where it sits right now. So that's as cool as we can sort of get it. And we, I live in California, in Los Angeles, Southern California, where it can get pretty warm. It can get, you know, stay pretty toasty at night. But that's the ambient, yes, fan in the room, fantastic. But even so, I would still get hot in bed no matter what I did. I need to have a cover over me. I need to have that weight on top of me. So yes, I have a weighted blanket and I have a super cool um, lightweight comforter and I've tried all those different machinations of things that I can have so that I, you know, just having a sheet on top of me doesn't feel right. It just feels, I don't feel safe. So I need to have the weight of something um, on me. But then, okay, the question is, how do I solve this problem? That I want that and I want to stay cool. I want the bed to be cool and my husband needs complete the opposite. So he needs, he's freezing at night, gets absolutely freezing cold. And so I looked around at some of the, the cooling devices, the mattress cooling devices, and I want to very quickly go over what I found because I think I've got a solution here. So first off, I looked at some of the mattress toppers, which are the ones that are the cool, to, just cool to touch. And these are ones that you're going to see in places like Bed Bath and Beyond and that advertises, hey, cool mattress or cool pillow or whatever. In the industry, it's known as cool to the touch. I don't like those. I don't think they work and I don't like the materials they're made out of. I think they're a waste of money. That's my personal opinion. So that was out of the question. Then I started to look at some of the really fancy um, 
ones that are the water ones. So they're these water mattress cooling systems. And I really looked at that, did my research, a number of things that I didn't like. One, I didn't like the fact that um, there was water involved because there can be leaks, there can be problems with that sort of leaks and dripping and whatnot. And then that leads to bacteria. That horrifies me. So I could never do that. Plus it's cumbersome, plus there's a reservoir and it's just a cumbersome thing. And I looked at all of that, did the research. And I'm like, A, it's not gonna fly with my husband in any way, shape or form. And B, it just doesn't feel right. I don't wanna do that. And it's also extremely expensive. So I'm like, you know, for the, for the better made one. So I'm like, not gonna do that. So then I came across, across something called Perfectly Snug. And Perfectly Snug is an air cooling or an air heating system. And what is absolutely genius about it is it solves the kind of, you know, his and her, if you like, problem is that I can have my side of the bed super cool and he can have his side of the bed super warm. Isn't that amazing? And so, um, so, I have tried uh, my Perfectly Snug for a couple of weeks and I'm going to tell you, give you my results of what I really think and how it worked for me um, in a bit. Uh, but first I just want to quickly show you what it looks like because when I was searching for it I was like yeah kind of what does it look actually look like on the bed it was like a little bit confusing for me so I want to show you that and I and, um, and and show you what it looks like when I unboxed it and put it on the bed before I made the bed up um, but it's called perfectly snug and as I say it is a total air system air cooling and heating system so let's take a look at it unboxed on my bed. Okay, so this is the Perfectly Snug unboxed. I'm not gonna bore you with the unboxing. It's actually really easy to unbox. And um, it's like a, a, a mat, you know, is this is the thickness. I just wanna show you of the topper itself. The mesh goes up, there's a cotton, underneath it's just cotton. The controls are at the top end, much like if you had an electric blanket or something, you just plug that in behind you. There's two dual controls, which is awesome because there's dual control. You know, I can do all my own controls on my side for major cooling and he can do all his controls on his side for heating. And there's also a foot um, warmer uh, control and there's all sorts of good stuff. And it comes just with a quick start guide. And I will say it's really easy. So you would connect it to your app and then the, the instructions are, or I should say connect, get the app and connect it to your topper. And then you can control everything from your app. You can set the timing, the days of the week, the temperature, the cooling, you can put everything in there for each side, which is really, really useful. And the thing that I really, really like about this is that I really do like the fact that I don't have to use the app to control it, that there are buttons on the side that I can just literally reach over if I want to use the quick burst function to get a quick burst of cool, hello, hot flash, night sweat, then I can do that, which is so awesome. And I can just get that quick burst. Or if I want to dial up the cool a little bit more, I can do that. If I want to dial it down, I can do that. If he suddenly gets freezing cold in the middle of the night, he can, um, you know, dial up the heat. So that is fantastic because I think, as I said before, the last thing that you want to do is have to sort of go and reach for your phone in the middle of the night. So easy. <clears throat> you lie down, you reach for the button, and it's just on the side there, and you just click whatever you need to do. So that is how easy the unboxing and the set up is. Okay bed made up. Um, yeah, so, 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 my results from sleeping with the perfectly snug for a couple of weeks are thumbs up. Now, I think the thing that I like about it most is that I can control from the app how I want it to sort of cool me during the night. And, and you'll figure it out when you use it. So for instance, you can go, okay, in the first part of the night, I want it to be, you know, cool three. Then, because I know that time of the night, which is probably about two or three 
in the in the morning that's when I just know for me that's when I can start really heating up a little bit more so then I can control that that I can get that lovely cooling in then um, the thing is what I love most and I don't think some of the other beds certainly not the water systems have this is this blast feature so I can just press the little buttons and I can do a blast of cool when I need it. That is absolutely awesome. My husband loves the foot warmer thing because he runs, as I said, very cold, but particularly in his feet. He's super tall and his feet get super, super cold at night. So he absolutely loves that. I like the fact that it's air, so it circulates throughout. And I like the fact that it's not, I was think I was a bit freaked out before because I've never used anything like this before. I thought it might be, oh my gosh, a little bit kind of extreme, but it's actually super subtle, which is what I really like. It's not like this sudden blast of freezing cold air. It's subtle and you can control it. So I really like that. Also, the other thing is that when you do the blast, the it comes on, the motor comes on. And it's, a, it's a, a, a sound that comes on, but it's not too loud. And actually, I find it oddly, I find sounds quite comforting when I'm sleeping. Like I have an air filter in my room and it's quite, a lot of people come in and go, wow, that's really loud. I actually really like it. It's a little bit like white noise to me. And this is really similar. So for me, it's just not a problem at all. And it hasn't been a problem for my husband either. So all in all, I think it's a really good choice. It is pricey. Um, for sure, particularly, I mean, you can get different sizes, queen size, king size, twin size, whatever. It is pricey. But as far as I'm concerned, the things that I value and I invest in are the things that are the most important to me. So top of the whole pyramid for me, for there is, it's priceless, is my health. And there are certain things that come very closely underneath that to sort of support that health, one of which is sleep. So if it's going to make a huge difference to you to have a really cool bed, then this could be an, a good option for you to invest in. Um, all right, let's get to the final tip. And the final tip is, is more of a mental tip, a psychological tip. So, um, so as many of you know, I, I coach a lot, a lot of women. I'm a transformational mindset coach. And one of the things that we focus on is mindset and expanding psychology and a lot of sort of cognitive behavioral therapy techniques that are very, very important and particularly important after menopause because sometimes there's a lot of unpacking to be done there and there's a lot of mental blocks and, and patterns and whatnot. So that's way deeper and bigger than I can go into the scope of this video. But one thing I will say, and one thing that I have all my clients do, is stop the bad news. Stop the bad news. Sounds obvious, but, you know, if you watch the news, it's bad news. And even if you watch five minutes of news, it's bad news. If it leads, it bleeds. And then you watch the news and then you get onto your social media and you get onto your Facebook feed or whatever it is, or it's, there's always bad news. There's always something to be terrified about or scared about or to freak you out or to make you angry. Always, always, always. I call TV the dream stealer in that way. So make it a very, very big priority to you to at least start looking at how much time you spend consuming in the morning and in the evening news that's bad and start noticing how you feel after you've watched the news, after you've watched a particular TV show, it's not even necessarily the news, could be a particular documentary or a news type of show or something that freaks you out. It's about murder or something. Just start noticing and being so sensitive to how what you're consuming, the media that you're consuming, makes you feel. But just stop the bad news because it affects you. It affects how you sleep. It affects your cortisol levels. It ramps them up even more. It's definitely going to affect how you go into a night's sleep. It affects how you dream. And it's going to affect how you wake up in the morning. Your first thoughts in the morning. You know, very often going to be driven by fear. 
and anxiety, if not panic. So that's such an important piece. You don't need to listen to the news at night. You can get all your news from one, just pick an app. There are lots and lots of little quick apps that give you all the news you need and, uh, to know in five minutes, or you can read it just in five minutes, done and dusted, never have to look at it again. All right? So those are my five really important, powerful tips for getting a better night's sleep. Link to the glasses, link to Perfectly Snug, um, with a coupon code, uh, discount code in the underneath the video, and um, and let me know. Set, put your comments underneath this video. I want to know how you sleep, or how, or what is interrupting your sleep, and maybe some of the remedies that you've tried. There are all sorts of other things and lots of other videos that I have, such as you know, yes, some supplements can take make a difference. Yes, some teas can make a difference. Yes, there's other things that you can do that factor in and there there are a lot of other tips but these are the heavy lifting tips and again really speaking to addressing the root cause of what's really going on as well and again I'll finish with if there is if there are root cause issues such as um, chronic disease inflammation characterized maybe by aches and pains in your joints and systemic inflammation throughout, pre-diabetes, di diabetes, if you're overweight, going into obese, if you have sleep apnea, um, if you have some of these issues, those are root causes that need to be addressed. And you can go and visit your doctor and discuss those, get some testing done, see what's going on underneath the hood, and look at some of my other videos because I address many of those issues in my other videos. I'll see you next time.